Father, in the name of the blessed Lord Jesus, we give you praise, adoration, majesty, and dominion. The one whose throne is before the city chambers. Lord, we thank you, Father. Jesus, reveal secrets to us, Lord. Teach us your word. And may your name be eternally glorified in our lives and in everything that concerns us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 For glory and grace. For glory and grace. Why, why don't you say it to someone? Say it to two people. For glory and grace. For glory and grace, brother. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We love you, Pastor Amma. You are too much. God bless you, man. Amen. 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 All right. Let, let's let's look at our concluding lessons on our series, the the gifts of the Son, and um, um, the Lord has indeed been gracious to us, teaching us how to identify the fivefold ministry gifts of the Son and what they require, and how to recognize them. Because you see, it takes the spirit of, of a prophet to recognize, it takes the spirit of the prophet to recognize a prophet when you meet one. The same way it takes the spirit of an apostle to recognize an apostle when you meet one. The same thing goes for other offices too. And, um, and that is why the spirit through whom these offices can be recognized, the Holy Ghost himself is the one teaching us for us to know what these offices are. Amen. Amen. So we've been able to cover the ministry gift of the apostle, the ministry gift of the prophet, the ministry gift of the evangelist, and we concluded the last time on the ministry gift of the pastor. And uh, this time around, we want to look at the last ministry gift of the teacher. Who is a teacher? So, let's talk. Who can tell us who is a teacher? Who do you think a teacher is? Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Who is a teacher? Who do you think a teacher is? Pray. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Anyone? Praise the Lord. Be bold now. Come on. Who is a teacher? Looking from New Jersey. Hello, ma. We don't know your name. What is your name? This is Buki from New Jersey. Oh, Pastor Buki. Good afternoon, ma. All right, ma. Go ahead. Let's hear you, ma. Somebody who impacts knowledge and it's not just um, it's the, the teacher impacts knowledge and they're able to interpret like not everybody is a teacher um, in the sense that some people will take a concept and explain it to you in such a way that it's like oh my goodness I never thought of it that way before some people will just say it to you and it goes over your head. You know for sure that they're not teachers. And some people, they will, the way they will explain it to you, it will be so... You will have no choice but to understand. I call such a person a teacher. A teacher will be able to teach in pretty much all across the age, uh, irrespective of... I always say a good teacher will be able to explain to anybody, irrespective of age, and then we understand that concept. So that's what a teacher is to. Okay, fine. Pa Pastor Buki, let's ask you from your definition. Who would you now look at? Um, can we look at a an individual today and say, okay, fine, this person is a teacher. Do you have an example in mind or someone we can actually look and say, okay, fine, based on your definition, 
I mean, why do you call the person my teacher? Definition, yes. In this class or in general? <laughs> so, okay, not in this. Okay, in this class, at least we have teachers in our class too. Even in this class, or yes, in definitely. In in I will say, Brother O.C. is a teacher, not because he's just teaching, but the fact that even the children can understand what he's teaching. That will be one. Um, in general, in general. I didn't, in general. Mm. Who will I say is a teacher that you know? You may not know the... Okay, no problem. Then. No problem. But it's somebody who can take a concept and be able to break it down and explain it in such a way that even the most novice person can understand. But Pastor Buki, don't you think a pastor can do the same thing too? Not all pastors can teach. A pastor can preach. Now we may say what's the difference between preaching and teaching. Teaching is being able to explain concepts in such a way that somebody is impacted and they change from what they, I won't just say they change because when you talk about other stuff, they may not change but they understand the concept. Whereas if somebody is just preaching, they're sharing it with you. And I won't say they have to convince you, I mean, but it's just that they're sharing it and you could say, okay, maybe that's their opinion. But when a teacher teaches you, you will see from a different angle. Amen. Like Pastor Buki. Pa see, not just from the point of that teacher, but you will see it in the light of what the person is explaining to you. Amen. Like Pastor Buki. Pastor Buki is a good teacher. Praise God forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I didn't know Amen. That. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Amen. All right, let's hear from someone who is a teacher. Pastor Buki just expressed her own opinion. We believe that it is sentimental. We believe that Pastor Buki's opinion is sentimental. But let's see whether you might be able to give us an objective definition of a teacher, or maybe you also follow Pastor Buki's sentimental definition. <laughs> Pastor Buki, we are teasing you now, but let's hear from someone else. Who can tell us who is a teacher? Amen. Amen. Well, this is Rebecca from New Jersey. Oh, Prophet Rebecca, let's hear from you. Tell us who is a teacher. Yes, uh, <coughs> a teacher is somebody that tells somebody something. A teacher is somebody that will show somebody how to do something shows you how to do a thing, you know, by instructing you the ways and how to go about doing it. That is who we teach you, it's somebody that will show you how to do things, by like giving you instructions on how to go about doing the things. That's who I think a teacher is. Okay, like like a school teacher, right? A teacher in a school and... Uh... Yeah, like you too. <laughs> Like the way he teaches, he tells us how to do it, how to go about it, and stuff. Yeah, like a teacher in school too. He will teach and he will instruct you and tell you doing stuff by giving them instructions how to go about and doing them, showing them so that they can get, begin to, to get the knowledge that they need. Okay. Okay. All right. But, but, but can we say, Sister Rebecca, that you are a teacher? Can, can you see Sister Rebecca? as a teacher? <coughs> All my life, Sister Rebecca had loved teaching. Okay. That was what she had wanted to do before. Okay. The, Sister Rebecca did not go teaching because she was looking for the money, so she could do nothing. She went to do nothing. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, man, thank you for your honesty. If I had too much. You know, that's the truth, sir. Because I, every time I go and roll, it's good to be a teacher. I start and I leave it. And I go back to the start to nothing. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sister Rebecca. Thank you so much for your own opinion. All right, let's hear from somebody else. Who do you think a teacher is? If you agree with Sister Rebecca, tell us why you agree with Sister Rebecca. If you disagree, tell us why you disagree. Who is a teacher? Tell us. Come on, everybody went to school. Most of you here all went to school. Ah, ah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please tell us your name, ma. Good afternoon. I'm um, Eberi uh, from New Jersey. Okay, ma. I, I think a teacher is someone who um, takes their time, their most, um, take their time 
to explain an idea or a concept to a group of people or students in such a way that something that looks very complicated or complex, they break it down to the simplest form, the understanding of everyone. Um, usually, most of the teachers that I have known, they are not easily aggravated. They have a very gentle spirit. They are always available to um, extend help, even when it's not convenient for them to do that. And they are always uh, seeking for the good of um, the people they teach to make sure that they really understand um, you know, the idea they are trying to put across um, to, to them. All right. Thank you so much, ma. So who do you have, for instance, that you can pick as a, as a typical example that, that you um, can... It's not pop. I don't know if it's my pastor in the church, Pastor okay. Tom Fiola, okay. he is very, very good. He's Amen. a pastor, but he teaches so well. Amen. Can take a topic and break it in such a way that you see it in a different, practical way. Yes. And yes. I have been blessed to be uh, going to that church for the past uh, few years now. Yes. And um, everywhere I go, I search for somebody like him because, you know, he has really been a great, um, a great pastor, not, not only pastor, a great teacher, you know, for, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Now, must a teacher be gentle? Do you, do you, do you all subscribe that a, a teacher must be a gentle person? Can a teacher be gentle? Must he be gentle as one of the qualities of a teacher? Or is it because, because sometimes there's a possibility that um, we might mistake somebody who talks with a low voice, who is gentle in his presentation, to be a teacher? Is that one of the indices of knowing who a teacher is? Can we can we impute that as one of the qualities of a teacher? Gentleness. Let's hear your take on it. Not necessarily, but they have to be approachable. Please tell us your name, ma. This is Bookie from New Jersey. Okay, you said that. Uh, not necessarily. I'll say gentle, but I'll say in love and approachable. Okay. I know it's not somebody who's just going to say okay to everything, but they, whatever they're doing, there has to be a rationale okay. behind what they're doing, and they have to be approachable. All right. Thank you, Pastor Buki. All right. Let's hear from someone who is a teacher and, and um, what he or she thinks a teacher should be or is. Brother Francis. All right. Daddy Francis, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, a teacher is somebody who has been trained or who, who is well experienced in life and then uh, he has tested it, found it to be good practically uh, and then he will need to others to do the right thing, to teach them the right thing because he has experienced it. Mm. He's a teacher. He knows what importance that is he has tested it and got good results and he teaches uh, others well that if you were to go by that your definition would you say that uh, someone who has not really experienced life cannot be a teacher per se because he, he cannot draw from the wealth of experience after all he is just a novice uh, if you were to go by that your definition would you say that a teacher must be an experienced person with reference to life experience. <laughs> well, it's always good to be a good teacher when you teach with examples. Right. So that defines it. That means from all indications now, you know you are daddy in the class. So uh, you are you should be our teacher there. Because that diversity you have really experienced life. <laughs> hey that diversity, sir. Well, well see, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, what well, the, the Holy Spirit has experienced. <laughs> that, that, that he said, he said the Holy Spirit has, has experienced. That he said, but you have experience too, and you have the Holy Spirit, don't you? Oh, <laughs> 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 
Thank you so much, Zah. Thank you so much, Zah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's hear one more person. Who do you think a teacher is? Okay. Yes. Please tell us your name, ma. Yeah, this is Benedict. All right, ma. Go ahead, sister Benedict, ma. Yeah, I'm not going to do it in because not everybody is a teacher. Even some of them take the post as a teacher, but I'm not the teacher. Um, to my own understanding about what a teacher is, I believe a teacher is one who <coughs> who has the patience to teach, to teach, teaching in a sense like that. He will teach it in a way that it says the people is teaching it to, to understand it. They, um, a teacher must have patience because without the having patience, so without loving the uh, loving yeah, people in uh, teaching and having patience, there's no way they will understand it. Because not everybody understands it the same way. But the teacher ha um, we have the, a way of uh, teaching that thing in order to make the students or to, to make the group of people to understand it. By giving an example, do, doing it um, in different ways for them to understand it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Benedict. Yeah. But brothers and sisters, um, um, patience. Must patience be part of the qualities of a teacher? Because when, when uh, initially we looked at gentleness, and Pastor Buki took time to explain that, well, a teacher should be accessible. And Sister Benedict now brought out the word patience. And um, uh, should it be part of the qualities of a teacher? Patience. And... Um, Yes. Please, we need to. Monica. We need to know your name. Tell us your name, ma. Evangelist Monica. Yes, ma. Go ahead, ma. Who is a teacher, and why do you think patience is part of? A teacher. A te patience is needed in a, anybody, anybody that is teaching because not all students or not all the people that are being taught have the same, uh, the same uh, intelligence in. Uh, understanding uh, the same understanding method so if a teacher is not patient enough patient enough he cannot teach the students both the ones that are so intelligent and those that are not so intelligent so with patience a teacher can easily communicate or instruct uh, both the uh, intelligent and the less intelligent ones so that everybody will understand all right but sometimes go if it, uh, uh, go ahead go ahead sometimes uh some teachers are impatient when they teach and the the, the little the, the intelligence ones will understand and you just le le leave the those 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 ones that are not intelligent because it's not patient enough to communicate everything to everybody all right so who is a teacher then evangelist monica who is a teacher then is a uh, a person who is uh, who has uh, the ability. Can you, I call it the ability? An instructor who can teach, who can teach uh, people in a way that they will understand. Like you, ma. Whatever the person is. Huh? Like you. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, ma. In a way that uh, people will understand what the person is teaching and uh, through that teaching they will uh, 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 they will gain something from the teaching of that person and if uh, from that teaching they also will know exactly the, 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 the uh, uh, something concerning that teaching for example in mathematics in english and in other languages in the bible in the bible the word of god is good te teachers Teach the word so that you will understand it the way it is written yeah. and the, uh, how it is done so that you will be able to teach others the same thing. All right. So, so um, in a sense, we can say that Evangelist Monica. Can you see Evangelist Monica as a teacher? Evangelist Monica, ma. Sir? 
can, can we say that Evangelist Monica is a teacher? At least you have taught us in this class. Can we say Evangelist Monica is a teacher? Um, uh, we cannot say that Evangelist Monica is a teacher because she taught in the class. Okay, so. She taught in the class. We, are, we cannot say I'm a teacher. Okay, Alice, you are a mother, you are a grandmother, you have raised your children well in the fear of the Lord. So, can we say you are a good teacher then? Yes. No, we cannot say I'm a good teacher because I'm a, a grandmother and I've been teaching all the children. I'm a good teacher. What makes a good teacher? What makes a good teacher is uh, patience. What makes a good, a good teacher is explanation of what you are teaching to the people, to the, to this, uh, to the extent that they will understand it. So, with love and then you, you will not be harsh to them mm -hmm. so are you saying that evangelist monica is not a patient person <laughs> sometimes evangelist monica is not patient anyway are you serious when I'm teaching goodness, if goodness uh, doesn't understand, or oh, Christine, if they don't understand, if, if uh, Speedwell understands, I will just leave uh, Christine and the goodness and then teach uh, Speedwell uh, and live and live. Oh my God. Don't, don't you think that it's part of the qualities of a teacher? <laughs> Sir? Don't you think that what you just did to Pastor Goodness and Pastor... Christine, is is one of the qualities of a teacher. It's not one of the qualities of a teacher. If a, a good teacher, well, no matter what happens, he must, he must make sure that Christine and goodness understands what he is telling them. Are uh, you see? Yeah. enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Monica. So, in a sense, you are saying that Evangelist Monica is not a teacher. Or is a teacher but not a good one. So, which one? I'm a teacher, but I'm not. I'm, I'm a teacher, but I'm not a perfect teacher. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Boy, Evangelist Monica, one more question. Can you say Pastor Grace is a good teacher? Would you say Pastor Grace is a teacher? Pastor Grace is a Pastor Grace is a good teacher. Are you serious? Why do you think so? Because he has patience, and uh, when he teaching, he teaches with understanding. He will understand whatever he is teaching. He teaches with understanding, and he make sure that you understand what he is teaching you. Okay, so and now, Evangelist Monica, don't you think that Pastor Grace got it from you? At least she's your daughter now. No, Pastor Grace got it from the dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Not from me. Not from me. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's hear one more person before we go into what does hear the Lord concerning the office of a teacher. Let's hear one more person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Um, Sister Gloria New Jersey. Oh, Ifa, the teacher in the class. Amen. Okay. Tell us who is a teacher. Ah. I want to try my because I'm listening patiently. I really want to know. Listen, but my own contribution as a teacher, um, I think a teacher is someone who uh, implants wisdom to others and teaches them about the word of God. Mm. And um, I think Jesus Christ was a teacher. He's a good example of a teacher. And um, um, <laughs> that's what I can say. That's the little thing I know about teaching. All right. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you all for your contributions. All right. One more person. Does anyone have something to say about? Amen. Amen. What is your name, ma? Oh, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Justin from New Jersey. Okay, Pastor Justin. Let's hear you, ma. Tell us. Yeah. I think a teacher is someone who is skilled to instruct. Okay. An interpreter of a doctrine. Okay. And this teacher must be a master of the doctrine that they teach. Okay. And patience is also needed because without the patience, he cannot explain to others who are not quick learners. Mm. Amen. Okay, so if you say he's a skilled teacher in doctrine, that means mathematics is a doctrine. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the Bible. Uh, the teaching according to the Bible. Okay, so that means that the rabbis on TV, those at least the word rabbi means teacher, right? So the rabbis on yes. TV are teachers too. Well, not all of them are teachers. Why do you say so? Why do you think not all of them are teachers? 
But they bear the title. But the ones that come on the TV, I see they come to beg for money for Israel. Yeah, oh, Pastor Justino, that's not fair. You will pass on like it. <laughs> that's what I see. <laughs> ah, refuse to see that one. No. Refuse to see it. <laughs> Why don't you choose to see something different? Because I, I I listen to them every now and then, hey. and I don't hear any teaching from them. All right. They always speak. They only speak about how uh, the misplaced Jews okay. are suffering. Okay. That's what I see. All right. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you. All right, brothers and sisters. Uh, you guys are wonderful people. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Uh, so you want one more? Okay, please tell us in one minute. Oh, yeah, tell us then. Tell us your name. But we need to know your name. This is Osama from New Jersey. Okay, go ahead, ma. I believe a teacher, I will narrow into the gospel, should be somebody who is full of the Holy Ghost and have communion with the Holy Ghost because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is a teacher. He's the one that will lead us into all truth. <coughs> and for you to know the truth of God, you have to really understand um, the person of the Holy Spirit. And you have to communicate with the Holy Spirit to know how to interpret and explain with the wisdom of God. All right. So uh, I would say a, a teacher, as far as the, God, uh, the Bible is concerned, should be somebody who is full of the Holy Ghost. So if that is the case, then every born again Christian who, has, who is full of the Holy Ghost is a teacher then? Thank you, Sister Amma. Thank you so, so much. Well, yeah, brothers and sisters, you guys are wonderful. Thank you all for your contributions. You all did well. In fact, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. And um, <laughs> praise God. Praise God. And indeed, brothers and sisters, you guys are wonderful students in the class of the Holy Ghost. And it also means that you guys should buy each yourselves um, a bucket of ice cream and lick. Please buy vanilla. But then... <laughs> let's, let's go into today's lessons then well our theme scripture is Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, we have two verses that we we look at primarily as our theme scriptures it says <coughs> uh, our theme scriptures are in verses 8 uh, verses 8 and verses 11. Uh, he says, Wherefore he said, when he ascended, that he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So, the Son Jesus Christ has given gifts to men. The word men there actually refers to the church because in verses 11, he says, And he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, some evangelists some pastors and teachers it says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edification of the body of christ is that in your bible yeah. is that in your bible yeah but we've been able to look at um the office of the apostle the office of the prophets the office of the evangelists, and the office of the pastor now we want to conclude with the ministry gift of the teacher. How do we know 
the ministry gift of the teacher. But there is one notion that seems to run across every definition that many of us gave in the class. And, um, and that notion is the notion of patience. And um, using that word, uh, patience, for a teacher is, is uh, we're not too comfortable with it. And we'll give you reasons why. Turn to, Ephesians, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, if you are there, say Amen. 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 If you are there, say thank you, Holy Spirit. If you are in Galatians chapter 5, say thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, verses 22. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Is what? Praise God. Galatians 5.22. What did he say? He says, But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Is love, love joy, joy, peace, peace long-suffering, long gentleness. Did you see that? Gentleness, goodness, goodness okay. faith, meekness, temperance. temperance. Against such... There is no, no, no. Law. law. When he talks about temperance there, he's talking about patience. Meekness has to do with self-control. So patience and gentleness are qualities of the recreated human spirit. You don't have to be a teacher to be gentle. You don't have to be a teacher to be a patient person. Because prophets too can be patient. It, sounds for, it may sound very unusual to you, but prophets can be patient too. Because their spirit too is also recreated. Apostles can be patient too. Evangelists can be patient. Can be patient. Of course, pastors can be patient. And well, of course, a teacher should be patient and gentle because of the recreated fruit of his spirit. Amen. Praise God. Because of the fruit of his recreated spirit. Uh, that's, uh, that's the better way to put it. But let's look at the Greek word for teacher. The word teacher is from a very funny Greek word. And it is pronounced as did as kolos. Did as colos D I D A S K A L O S D I D A S K A L O S D I D A S K A L O S Did as colos did as colos. Can you say it? Say it. Say did as colos. Did as colos. No, don't pronounce it as did as colos. It is did as colos. Did as colos. Did 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 as colos. Did as colos. Did as colos. I mean, did as colos. Did as colos. I mean, did as colos. All right. So. Um, um, the word didaskalos means instructor. It means doctor. 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 D O C T O R. A doctor. It means a doctor. If you recall, when Jesus met Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, How come you, being a doctor, a ruler over Israel? So a doctor is a teacher. That's what your doctorate degree also means too. Those doctor degrees that many of you are bagging. You think it's just to put PhD there. Somebody say, I don't want to be a teacher, but you have a PhD. So why do you have a PhD? See? So, <clears throat> doctorate in nursing means you are 
a teacher of nurse, of, of nursing. Then it also means a master. It also means master. Teacher means master. Didaskolos. Didaskalos means master. It also means teacher. Now, it, it has an it is it is equivalent to the title rabbi. Rabbi. And if you study in scriptures, many a times Jesus was addressed as rabbi. 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 And like Pastor Justine said, uh, she was correct when she said, one that teaches another doctrine. A teacher of good things. An expounder. And of course, you have the opposite of it. All right. But um, Pastor Buki and every one of you that gave your definitions, you were also correct. But just that, this is how the original Greek puts it. But for us to really know how to identify one, because if we are to go by the literal definition of the Greek, uh, we we'll assume that everyone who can actually instruct or has a doctorate degree to his name, automatically is a teacher. So the moment we see that you are Apostle XYZ PhD, going by the literal definition of the Greek, it means that you are a, doc you are a teacher. But that is not the case. Because it is an office. The same way the office of an apostle is an office. The same way the ministry gift of, like we said, the apostle is an office. The same way the ministry gift of a prophet is an office. The same way the ministry gift of an evangelist is an office. The same way the ministry gift of the pastor is an office. That is how also the same way the ministry gift of the teacher is an office. Now, one blunder often made by the church today is to relegate the office of a teacher as the least office. So everybody desires to be a pastor. Nobody wants to be addressed as a teacher. Everyone wants to be addressed as a pastor. No one wants to be addressed as a teacher. So here are people going to Bible colleges, fighting tooth and need to be ordained as pastors, even though their primary call is the teaching ministry. So who is a teacher? And how do you know one when you meet one? Turn your Bibles to the book of Ezra. 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 Ezra chapter 7. Ezra. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> thank you, Holy Spirit. Ezra. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. <coughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you in the book of Ezra? Yeah. Ezra is after what book? Second Chronicles. After Second Chronicles, you have the book of Ezra. Chapter one. Ezra chapter seven. Ezra was <clears throat> a, a teacher. He was a classical example. He was a classical example of who a teacher was in his day in the Old Testament. We reference to the Old Testament. 
and then we're going to look at um, um, the New Testament. So, are you in chapter seven? Yeah. All right. So let's let's read <coughs> from verses one. We want to read from from the original Greek. We want to read from the original Greek because of time. All right. So, if you are there, say amen. It says, now, after these things, in the reign of Atzazis, king of Pasha, there went up Ezra, son of Seriah, son of Azariah, son of Hikiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitop, son of Amariah, son of Azariah, Son of Meriat, son of Zerahiah, son of Uzi, son of Buki. Pastor Buki, you are, you are, you are part of Ezra's lineage. Son of Abishai, son of Phinehas, son of Eliza, son of Aaron, the chief priest. Now, what we just read tells us the lineage of Ezra, that Ezra was a Levite. He was a Levite. Now, look at verse 6. He says, This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a scribe, skilled in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. Now, Pastor Justin was correct when she said, a teacher is one who is skilled in doctrine. True. Pastor Justin, you are correct. Thumbs up for you. But look at, look at, look at that expression there. He says, this Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses, which God had given, which God had given Israel, and the king granted him all he requested because the hand of the Lord, his God, was upon him. No wonder he was killed in the law of Moses, which the Lord had given Israel. So a teacher is not just someone who can just teach. First of all, it begins with the hand of the Lord being upon you. And when you study the character of those mightily used of the Spirit of God, for the priest, in the person of Ezekiel, and in the person of Ezra, these were primarily the two people that the Spirit of God expressly said the hand of the Lord was over. The hand of the Lord was over. But for the prophets, they were called from their mother's womb. That's the peculiar thing of a teacher from a prophet. A prophet is born a prophet. A teacher is one that the Lord puts his hand over. But it begins with you being skilled in the law of the Lord. So it begins with you knowing the word first before you can be acquainted with the spirit behind the letters. So a teacher of the word is one who just who does not just know the writings, he knows the author. So every word, even from the mouth of a teacher, is Rhema and not Logos. Even though he teaches from the Logos, he speaks Rhema. So one of the ways of identifying a teacher of the word is that he is skilled. In the law of the Lord. Now, we are not observing the law of Moses anymore. The word of God is our law. Amen. Amen. So, if you study if you study 2 Timothy, Paul says to Timothy, study to show yourself approved, right? A workman that needs not be ashamed, he says, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is in the ministry of a teacher. A teacher rightly divides the word of truth because he is skilled in it. Praise God. Now, 
Let's see something about this teacher. How it all began with Ezra. Let's see how it all began with Ezra. Amen. Let's read verse 7. It says, And some of the sons of Israel, and some of the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants went up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Atzaziz. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For on the first of the first month he began to go up from Babylon. And on the first of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem. So he journeyed from, you know, April used to be the first month of the year. In the Jewish calendar, in the in the Hebrew calendar, April used to be the first month of the year, which was called the month of Abib. So when he says in the first of the first month, he's talking about on the first of April. He began his journey and journeyed five months to Jerusalem from Babylon because he was in Babylon. So you have from April, you have May, June, July, August, September. So, from April, he journeyed five months from Babylon and got to Jerusalem in September. Why? How come? Let's read from verse 9 again. He says, For on the first of the first month, he began to go up from Babylon, and on the first of the fifth month, on the 5th of September, he came to Jerusalem because the good hand of his God was upon him. Striking. Striking. Now, here, Ezra did not see visions. He didn't have to see visions. He didn't see visions though. The Bible never said he did here, as we just read from, verses seven, from chapter 7, verses 1. To verses 9. The Bible never said he saw vision. But the Bible expressly tells us from the Holy Ghost that the hand of the Lord was over him. And it was something Ezra himself was conscious about because he wrote this book. He was conscious that the reason why he was able to journey five months from the 1st of April to the 5th of September to arrive at Jerusalem was simply because the hand of the Lord was upon him. You get to see the reason why he was saying all of that. Because there was a time they needed to pray for safety on their journey. But look at verses 10. Now, why did Ezra have to take that step? We're looking at the ministry gift. We're looking at the ministry gift of a teacher. Who is a teacher? Now, look at verses 10. The Bible says, For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to practice it. And to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. Did you see that? First of all, it begins with you setting your heart on the things of the Spirit of God. Setting your heart. So the teaching, the call of a teacher begins with his heart. Begins from his heart. So he didn't have to be called by God. It was a personal choice he made. He was a Levite. But he determined to set his heart on studying the word of God, like we're doing now. Like we're doing now. So by implication, every one of us who have been consistent to, to class is a teacher. But if you get to see those who have been called into the office of a teacher, what makes them different from every other class of teacher? Or from his Sunday school teacher. But like we said, it begins with you setting your heart to study the word of God. And not just study it, to practice it. You see that? It begins with start setting your heart to study the word and then practice it. No wonder James said, do not just only be a hearer of the word, but a doer also deceiving yourself. He said, because if you are just only a hearer of the word without, a, without being a doer, you are deceiving yourself. And that's the problem we have today. Many study the word. They hear the word. 
They know all preachers on TBN, all the preachers on Daystar. They know all the renowned preachers. They know the itinerary of many events organized by many renowned men of God. But they are not practicers of what they hear. So, what made Ezra different? Now, there were other priests. When you look at verse 7 again, the Bible says, And some of the sons of Israel, and some of the priests, and the Levites, the singers, and the gatekeepers, the temple servants, went up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Azaziz. So there were Levites in their midst. But Ezra made a choice to study the word. The others saw it by reason of heritage. And that was all that mattered to them. But for Ezra, Ezra went beyond that. The Bible says, first of all, it began with his heart. His heart. His heart. So he did not only study the word of God, he practiced it and then he taught it. So a, a teacher of the word is a teacher of one. He teaches what he or she practices. That he or she has found from the word. That's where it begins. First of all, setting your heart to study the word. And then not just study, practice the word. And then teaching what you, what you have studied. Now, there are some teachers of the word who teach themselves. In other words, they only talk about themselves. They don't preach the word. They only preach themselves. And that's a mistake. A big colossal mistake. They preach themselves. They don't preach Jesus. They don't preach the word. That's not what we're talking about. And the reason why they can't preach Jesus is because they have not even set their hearts on the word to begin with. He said, Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to practice it and to teach his statutes and ordinance in Israel, not in Babylon. There is a specific place a teacher is sent to. A teacher is always sent to his own familiar environment, which is contrary to that of an apostle. An apostle is always sent to a foreign land. But a teacher is always sent to a people that he's familiar with. He's always in the midst of people he's familiar with. Because an apostle teaches too. Apostles teach too. When you read Mark chapter 6 verses 30, you find out that the Bible says, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. So apostles teach. But they teach in a foreign land. But what makes the difference between the teaching ministry of an apostle from that of a teacher who is called into the office of a teacher is that a teacher stays in his homeland to teach. If a teacher is in a foreign land, he goes back home to go and teach. That's the difference. An apostle goes to a foreign land to teach. But a teacher goes to, a, to the midst of his own community his own clan. So for instance, you can have a group of Ghanaians in a particular area and the Lord can raise up a teacher in their midst who understands the way the people of Ghanaians live their life. God does that sometimes. God does that sometimes. There's a renowned uh, apostle of God on TBN by the name of uh, Apostle... Hey, what's it? Uh, Maldonado uh, Apostle Maldonado but if you look at his ministry it is only targeted towards the Spanish people how many of you have seen that man of God on TV praise God praise God praise God yeah. are you alive? say amen if you are alive say amen Amen. Yes, yes, yes. I, I don't know. How I many of you have seen that man of God on TV? Or you probably have not seen him? Well? Yes. So there, there, there's a prophet, there's, a, there's an apostle like that. Apostle uh, Maldonado. You know, so he, 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 he's target. As a matter of fact, he speaks English very well. But he has an interpreter who interprets in English. But his target audience is the Spanish community. 
here in Amer here in America. So if, if you look at his ministry very well, uh, yes, he's sent to the Spanish community as an apostle, but really, he's really a teacher. Because he's one raised from the midst of his own people. You see the, you see, you see the difference now? So he's an apostle, he's standing in two offices now. He's standing in the office of an apostle, he's also standing in the office of a teacher. Even though he's called apostle, this, 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 he, he's primarily a teacher because he's one raised from the midst of his own people. Now, that is where it begins. That's how you know who a teacher is. It begins with you being in the midst of your own people. That's one of the factors of identifying a teacher. First of all, his heart is towards the things of the Spirit, studying the Word of God, and not just studying it, practicing it, and then teaching it. But then, you notice, the Bible says, Ezra went to, he said, verse 10 again, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord, and to practice it, and to teach it, to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. But he was in Babylon. He couldn't teach in Babylon. He needed to return home to teach. Because that is where the call is. That's one of the first things of knowing who a teacher is. No matter where he is, he goes back to go and teach his own people. If he's called to be a teacher. And there are many people today, many pastors today, who call themselves teachers, yet they were not teachers. God never called them to be teachers. And there are some who have been called to be teachers who are still functioning in, as, as pastors not knowing that that is the reason for the frustration. Not knowing that that is the reason for the frustration. Alright? Not knowing that that is the reason for the frustration. Yet they wonder why their ministry is not growing. Whereas they are actually in the wrong company. Because the Spirit of God has told them, mm -mm, you leave America, go back to Ghana. Or go back to, so, so, go to, leave Connecticut, go to New Jersey. I've raised you as a teacher in the midst of your own people. He says, no. God says, leave Connecticut, go to Berlin. And go to London, London Terrace and meet your fellow Ghanaian people there. And I want you to teach them my word. And if you notice, a teacher actually speaks in the language that the people themselves understand. That was the one thing. You see, because he couldn't teach his own language in a foreign land. He couldn't teach with his own language in a foreign land. He needed to return back to Israel. A teacher speaks in the language that he understands and one of the things that is peculiar in the office of a teacher that we said is that he teaches his own people now go to put your marker here quickly and let's see how this is consistent in the new testament go to mark chapter 6 put your marker here in ezra chapter 7 we'll quickly return to it but we just want to quickly do a comparison you get to see this consistency here about the office of a teacher they just don't teach strangers. They teach their own people. A teacher is one sent to his own people. And the motive here is towards reaching people of your own tribe, your own race, your own clan, people, people of your own culture. And at this moment now, as we're talking now, you cannot begin to see the pictures of certain people that you can see that the Lord has raised to be teachers. That is why no matter how successful they are in ministry, they cannot leave their locality because that is the mission field. As wealthy as they are, they are ready to build a mansion even in the midst of that locality. But they can come to America for visit. They can come and shop in Manhattan, but they will still return back home. They can own properties here in America, but they can't stay here. Because this is not their mission field. Even when they say, man of God, your message is powerful. Stay here. He cannot. He knows. He cannot. He is sent to his own people. Now, when you go to Mark chapter 6. Hmm, verses 1. If you are there, say amen. 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 Mark chapter 6, verses 1. 
Amen. 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 All right, let's see something now. You will see that. <coughs> In Mark chapter 6, verses 1, the Bible says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. Please mark that expression. Own country. Own country. Came down to his own country. And his disciples follow him. Now, the disciples were not necessarily people from Jesus' country. And why do you have ministers today who always want to have assistance pastors to be people of their own tribe or ministers who want to have people of their own village clan okay um, I'm Yoruba so my assistant pastor must be Yoruba then the other pastor can be Ghanaian but uh, you know you never can tell it's better you protect your own you are bringing carnality into Christianity. Heavy, colossal carnality. Alright, so. The Bible says Jesus went into his own country and his disciples followed him. Meaning that his disciples were not from his country. They were not from his town. The word country there means his town. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From where had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Please mark the word wisdom and mark the word mighty works. Mark the word wisdom, mark the word mighty works. Verse 2 again. And when the Sabbath day, let's start from verse 1. And he came out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From where hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon, and not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Offended at him. Verses 4. Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. And among his own king and his own house. You see that? Prophets are not received in their own country, among their own king, and in their own house. So what did Jesus do? Look at what he did. The Bible says in verse 5, He could dare do no mighty works, save that he laid hands, laid his hands upon a sick, a few sick folk, and hid them. And he marveled, verse 6, because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching, teaching, teaching. He knew that the office of the prophet was not welcomed. Prophets are generally not accepted in the midst of their own people. Only teachers are accepted. Only teachers are accepted in the midst of their own people. People are ready to accept teachers. People are ready to accept teachers, but they don't accept their own prophets. That is the problem. It has always been. And God knows that. That's why he sent teachers. Teachers are sent to their own people. Teachers are sent to their own people. Teachers are sent to their own people. Prophets are not sent to their own people because prophets are not accepted by their own people. Prophets are not accepted at all by their own people. They are not. But notice something. The Bible says, Here, Jesus came as a prophet 
but he realized that the office of the prophet was not welcomed in his hometown. Don't forget, even when Philip was told, when, when Philip told Andrew, told Nathan, sorry, told Nathaniel about Jesus, now what did Nathaniel say? He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can you remember? So don't forget, there was an impression about that land. So prophets were not even recognized. It was even the least tribe. It was taken in Israel that nothing good could ever come out of Nazareth. How much more now a prophet? Can't you see that the Bible says they were offended in verses 3? They were very offended. They said, this carpenter, what does he know? Which school did he go to? But yet they acknowledged in verses 2 that he, he was full of wisdom. And they marveled at the mighty works which were done by his hands. Yet, in verses 5, the Bible says he still could not do any mighty works. Yet, they acknowledge the mighty works which he did with, which the Lord did with his hand. Hmm. Look at verses 2 again. You get to see something about a teacher. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to do what? Teach. Teach. In the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. What are the mighty works there? Wisdom. Wisdom. Revelation. 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 For you to understand this, go to Ephesians chapter 3 quickly. Ephesians chapter 3. And see Paul's prayer for the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Sorry, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, sorry. Ephesians chapter 1. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Look at verses 15. He says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? 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 The spirit of wisdom and what? And revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So wisdom provokes the working of God's mighty power. Wisdom. That was what they saw in Jesus. My goodness. They saw wisdom displayed in a person. So go back again to Mark chapter 6. And when they saw Jesus display this wisdom, they said, Jesus... <laughs> I mean, they didn't say Jesus anyway, but, but they said, they said, from where had this man, has this man these things? From where had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That, that, did you see that? The that is connecting the next statement. That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Revelations, uncommon revelations. A common greatness of God's power. That means Jesus spoke with power. He was speaking with power. You know, in Hebrews chapter 4, please go to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12, quickly. We'll still come back again to Mark chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. If you are there, say Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
Amen, hallelujah. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. Look at verses 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Are you there? Look at what it says. It says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Why? Yeah. Verses 12. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful, he says, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrows. And is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and op opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That was what happened that day. Go to Mark chapter 6 again. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From where had this man these things? Who taught him? Where did he get all these things from? Why? Because the words that he spoke were piercing even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit to the hearers, discerning their thoughts and intents of their hearts. And many a times Jesus had that experience. He knew what they, they were always thinking. True or false? True. He says, from where, from where, from whence had, had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So one of the signs of knowing a teacher is that one, he is full of wisdom to give uncommon revelations with mighty works done by him. A teacher does mighty works. A teacher is not just a Sunday school teacher. A teacher does mighty works. And a teacher among the fivefold ministry is the first to be criticized. Look at it. Look at it there. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and of Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Now remember, when we were looking at the office of a prophet, we, we said that the office of the prophet is equivalent to the office of a teacher. How many of you can remember? How many of you can remember? Praise God. This is it. If you notice, look at the next statement. Jesus said, a prophet is without honor in his homeland. You see that? Yet he was functioning as a teacher. But he was being seen as a prophet, even though he came as a teacher. And the consequence of being seen as a prophet, instead of a teacher, cost verses 5. Verses 5 says, And he could do no mighty works there. He could not do any mighty works there. Why? Because the people were already offended. The people were already offended. And the offense, the result of the offense caused unbelief. Look at this. Look at verses 5 again and verse 6. And he could dare do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them, those who were suffering fever. But he could not do mighty works. He didn't say he didn't. He could not. That means he tried it. It didn't work. Look at verse 6. And he marveled. He was surprised. Ah, ah, why these people like this? My own people. His own people. And he marveled because of their own belief. So what did he do? He, and he went round about the villages teaching. So why is there so much unbelief today in the body of Christ? Because the office of a teacher is not recognized. We recall when we... When we came to America, the Lord said, I'm sending you to America. He said, because knowledge is lacking. He said, you know too much. Go and teach them. And as you teach them, I'll give you more. You will hear the word from my mouth and teach them. And I'll confirm the word with signs following. He said, oh, see, there is too much ignorance. Teach them. 
Yes, I called you to be a prophet, but do the teaching more because knowledge is lacking. Why? Because if you look at the church today, today, the condition of, of the church today is a condition of unbelief. A situation where you even have the pastor full of unbelief. What kind of congregation do you think you will raise? A pastor who is full of unbelief will raise members of colossal unbelief. Because you see, the members of a congregation are a reflection of their pastor. You are a reflection of who your leader is. You are the spitting image of your pastor, your leader. And if you study something carefully, please go to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Because we always seem to wonder why the early church did exploits for the Lord. We always seem to wonder why the early church did exploits to the Lord. Let's show you something that made the early church do exploits for the Lord. Are you in Acts chapter 13? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you in Acts chapter 13? Yes. Look at verses 1. What did he say? He says, Now there were in the church that was where? At Antioch, setting who? Setting who? Setting what? Brothers and sisters, setting what? Uh, setting prophets and, prophet and teachers. Teacher. Setting prophets and teachers. Prophets and teachers work hand in hand, they are always together. Wherever you find a prophet, you must have a teacher. If the work is going to be effective. But what do you have today in many ministries? Only pastors, 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 deacons, deacons, pastors, deacons, deacons. How do you want that kind of ministry to grow? Are you saying there is no teacher? If there is no teacher, it means that there is no prophet in view. That is the problem today you have in the church. The only teacher they have is Brother XYZ who teaches Sunday school. That is the problem today. They have relegated the office of the teacher to the background. That's the reason for the unbelief. So why are there no testimonies in the church today? Because there are no teachers. There are no teachers. So there can be no mighty works. There can be no mighty works where there are no teachers. And where there are no teachers, you can't have prophets there. You will never find a prophet in a congregation where there is no teacher. You can't. You can't have a prophet there. And you can't have a congregation where there are prophets without a teacher. There will always be teachers. But here you have today churches. Pastor this, pastor that. Senior pastor this, pastor this. Pastor this, pastor that. Pastor this, pastor that. So coming to church is like a no. Everybody just comes, hears the word of God, will give offering, choir will sing, and the pastor will preach for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, and then we'll, we'll take announcements, then maybe dedication if there is any, and then we'll share the grace and go back. No mighty works. Brothers and sisters, we said when we studied the character of the apostle, he does what? An apostle heals all manner of diseases. True or false? True. A prophet does not heal all manner of disease. A prophet only hears the decisions from heaven and comes to tell you. And we looked at the ministry of a prophet. An evangelist only preaches who? Christ. And does what? And works miracles. And the miracles that an evangelist works are what? How many of you can remember Acts chapter 8? How many of you can remember? He does what? He cast out unclean spirits. He heals the lame. The palsy. Cast out unclean spirits. Cleans. Um, heals the lame. Those suffering of palsies. And what, what again? What is the last one? There are four characteristics. There are four qualities of an evangelist. Is there in Acts chapter 8? Okay, turn your Bible there. Mm -hmm. We said an evangelist. 
cast out unclean spirits and then those taking of palsy he heals them those that are lame are healed and then he does what he preaches Christ that's who an evangelist is we said a pastor is a shepherd he, he leads but he has a voice that is familiar to the sheep and the sheep hears his voice he follow, and they follow him a pastor is one who gives his life for his for his sheep that means that a pastor is a selfless person he is not money minded he's not money he's not driven by money he's not money minded at all if you bring a pastor a gift you collect but he's not driven by money he does not play tricks to raise money from people a pastor does not do that now a teacher a teacher is one who does mighty works mighty works and it was not categorized which kind of work he does a teacher does mighty works that's the calling of a teacher but interestingly that is the office that has been relegated to the background today in the church that is the reason why there are no mighty works today in the church you think prophets are foolish to walk hand in hand with the teacher that we just saw in Acts chapter 13 Because you see, not all prophets, listen, listen, brothers and sisters, don't fool yourself. Not all prophets work miracles. But a teacher, a teacher, one who's one of the ways of identifying a teacher. Most of you were talking about patience. Ah, uh, a teacher must be patient and all that. Amen. We said it is one of the fruits of the spirit. One of the ways of identifying a teacher is that he does mighty works. And when there is no prophet in view, he stands in the office of a prophet. That was why even the church of Antioch did exploits. And interestingly, these are the two offices today that are mostly criticized, mostly criticized by Satan. The prophet, the office of the prophet, and the office of a teacher. Because Satan knows what these two offices does to his kingdom. Of course, the all other offices are terrors to his, they terrorize his kingdom. But these two offices, the prophet and the teacher. But today, what do we have? Everybody wants to be a pastor. Everyone to people, and that is even limit. You are limiting the power of God, particularly you that the Spirit of God has called to be a teacher. If only you knew how honorable that office was. Look at it there. Mighty works, mighty works. So, how do you know a teacher? One, he is sent to his own people, his own king folk, his own countrymen. That's one. He speaks their language, he understands them very well. And by understanding them, he knows how to bring the gospel to them. He knows how to bring the message to them. That's one. He is full of wisdom. Because it is wisdom that makes him understand his own people. The wisdom of God at work in him causes him to understand his own people. Knowing how to deal with his people. And then he is full of mighty works. Mighty works. Mighty works. And the presence of a teacher is the cure for unbelief. Not fasting. The presence of a teacher is the cure for unbelief. So the reason for unbelief, the, the cause of unbelief, or the consequence of unbelief, is that there will be no mighty works in view. And the cure for unbelief is the teaching ministry of a teacher. Because only a teacher can do mighty works. Now, if you notice here, if you notice that the Bible says Jesus himself only laid hands on a few sick folks. Only laid hands on a few sick folks. What does he mean by laid hands on a few sick folks? People who had stomach problems. Some who had headache would just come. He would just touch them. But the mighty works he could not do. Notice again, Jesus said a prophet is without honor in his own town. Prophets and teachers always go together. You will always have them together. Brothers and sisters, imagine if you have a company of prophets and teachers together. What a, what a group you have. Mighty, mighty works will be the result. But what do you have today in many churches? No mighty works in view. No. Prophets and teachers are inseparable. Inseparable. Because the two of them together, my goodness, and we're privileged that the Lord has blessed us in this fellowship, that we have prophets and teachers in our midst. And we give God praise because mighty works are done in our midst. 
Praise God. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for what God is doing. Because even at the Bible Center, the reports we hear is marvelous. It's marvelous. It, it marvels us. But then, let, let's see something further. Let's see something further. We were trying to actually reconcile uh, what we started in the book of Ezra. And um, please go back again to Ezra chapter 7. Let's see something. Somebody said, but Ozi, but there was no place where wisdom was mentioned here for Ezra. Well, let's see another thing about the quality of a teacher. Are you there in Ezra chapter 7? Yes. Praise God. Look at verses 11. He said, now, this is, the com this is the copy of the decree which King Atzaziz gave to Ezra the priest, the scribe. Did you see that? Each time he called Ezra the priest, he addressed him as what? The scribe, the teacher. For instance, Sister Gloria is our teacher here. So we, it, it will be for us to address Sister Gloria as Sister Gloria the teacher. He says, Ezra the priest, the scribe, learned in the words of the commandments of the Lord and his statutes to Israel, to Israel, to his own people, not to the people of Babylon, but to his own people. A teacher is one always raised for his people. So he, in a sense, he's an apostle to his own people, but then he doesn't come as an apostle, he comes as a teacher because he is sent to his own people. An apostle is sent to a foreign land, to a foreign people. Now, this is the copy of the decree which King Atzaziz gave to Ezra the priest, the scribe, learned. A teacher must be learned first in the things of the Spirit. You must know the things of the Spirit first. Learned in the words of the commandment of, of the law and his statutes to Israel. Atzaziz, king of kings. So Ezra the priest, the scribe, the law, the scribe of the law of God of heaven, perfect peace, and now I have issued a decree. Now listen, notice something. The king who King Abzaziz, who addressed himself as the king of kings, recognized that Ezra was a scribe of the law of the God of heaven. So a, a teacher is a scribe. Not to his pastor. A teacher is a scribe to the God of heaven. He is not answerable to the pastor. A teacher. Well, a pastor can be his spiritual father. For instance, it all depends on the one who ordained him. So he reports in a sense. He's under the authority of a pastor. But a teacher is not under the authority. Is not answerable to a pastor. Please don't make this blunder. Like they do today. They say a teacher is under a pastor. It is not true. Even a pastor can be under a teacher. If you read Acts chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3, you discover that it was the prophets and the teachers that ordained the apostles. So how dare you now come to say that a teacher is under a pastor? When it took the teachers and the prophets, the prophets and the teachers, to ordain the apostles. So what makes you think that the pastor is higher than the teacher? When these are the ones who even ordain the apostle. And yet we all say that the apostle is the, the office of the apostle is the highest office. If that is true, like you claim it is, how come you relegate the office of a teacher to the background? Whereas it was the prophets and the teachers who ordained the apostles. You see the myopia. But as I said, no office is higher than the other. They are all one and the same by the same spirit. Because they are all gifts of the Son, Jesus Christ. Giving to the prophet of the church to perfect the saints so that the saints can do the work of the ministry, he says, for the edification of the body of Christ. So we recognize the office of the apostle, we recognize the office of the prophet, we recognize the office of the evangelist, we recognize the office of the pastor, we don't recognize the office of a teacher. Whereas it is the teacher that does the mighty works. None of these offices do the mighty works, it is the office of the teacher that does the mighty works. And this is the office that we relegate to the background. Yet we want God to do mighty things in our midst. How can we do it? How? How? Because the one, the gift that he has given to the body of Christ to do the mighty works is the one we relegate to the background. So how can he do the mighty works? That is the problem. Because we have not been able to recognize who a teacher is.
Please jump to verses 21 of Ezra chapter 7 and see something again. And I, even I, King Abzaziz, are you there? Are you there? Yes. And I, even I, King Abzaziz, issue a decree to all the treasurers who are in the provinces beyond the river that whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven may require of you, it shall be done diligently. Now, notice something. Listen, a teacher is always the one, most of the time, who stands before kings to teach them. A teacher is always the one who finds favors before authorities. Because don't forget, a prophet does not have that patience. A prophet can pull down an authority, but a teacher is the one who finds favor before that authority. You see why prophets and teachers go hand in hand? Because, there is, because prophets know that they have been set over nations and kingdoms to uproot, to pull down. They still need the office of the teacher to go alongside with them. Because before they can pull an office down, they need an agreement from the office of the teacher. Because it is only a teacher that can find favor before the authority to, ga to gather all the blessings. Listen, brothers and sisters. Why, why do some churches today lack finances? Because there is no office of a teacher. The, of, the office of a teacher is not in view. Why does the office of a teacher, why does many churches today or fellowship group lack provisions? Because there is no teacher in their midst. When you read down, you get to see that everything that they needed for the temple in Jerusalem were given to them by King Azaziz of Babylon. Everything they needed. He even told them, if anything, look at it. He said, see to it that you give him everything that he may require. Everything. The one who gets things done in the church. One primarily through whom things are always done in the church. One of the signs of identifying one. That's where it also begins. Look at verses 25. And you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God, which is in your hands. Did you see that? A, a teacher is a custodian of the wisdom of God. Which was something we read in, in the New Testament. Two of us. Ephesians chapter 1. Right? So a teacher, first of all, the first criteria of a teacher is wisdom. We also saw that in Mark chapter 6. They say, what kind of wisdom? So a teacher is not just somebody who just teaches. He's one who is full of the wisdom. The wisdom of God is in his hand. He's a custom. Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. He, read it there. He says the wisdom. The king himself. King Azaziz, who addressed himself as king of kings. Was conscious of the fact that Ezra had the wisdom of God in his hands. Had the wisdom of God in his hands. Ah, what has happened to the church today? Everybody is looking forward to being a pastor. How about the teacher? The pastor does not have the wisdom of God in his hands. It is the teacher that is the custodian of the wisdom of God in his hands. Yeah, that's the one we ignore. That's the one we ignore. So we are saying, oh God, give us divine direction. How can you receive, receive divine direction when, when you don't even recognize the teacher? There's a teacher in your midst. You don't recognize him. Everybody is a pastor. Everybody is a deacon. As a matter of fact, we even think that the deacon is better than the pastor. Or than the, than the teacher. But let's see something. You know, brothers and sisters, you know sometimes we always talk about church organization. How to set up structures and all that. Uh... Who to appoint as leaders and all that. How do you know which one to ordain, which one not to ordain, which one to call into an office, which one not to call into an office? Look at verses 25 again. And you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God, which is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges that they may be judged, that they may judge all the people 
who are in the province beyond the river, even all those who know the laws of your God, and you may teach anyone who is ignorant of them. Did you see that? Did you see that? So even the king recognized ignorance. The Spirit of God is telling us, the Spirit of God was the one talking through this king. A teacher, see where ignorance is lacking, what you need is not a pastor, you need a teacher. And notice something there. He says, since the wisdom of God was in the hands of Ezra, Ezra was the one who is qualified to appoint leaders in church, not the pastor. It is not the pastor that appoints and ordains leaders. It is the teacher who does it. Because he knows which one is which. He knows which one is called to be a pastor. He knows which one is called to be an apostle. He knows which one is called to be a prophet. He knows which one is called to be an evangelist. Only the teacher does know. The others don't know. Now go to Acts chapter 13 again. You will see something. Please don't think that God is stupid when he speaks. Look at Acts chapter 13 again. If you are there, say amen. If you are there, say amen. Amen. He said, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. As Barnabas and Simeon that is called Ninja, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Mania, which had been brought up by with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Did you see that? And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Now, how come they knew that Paul and Barnabas were chosen of God for the work? He says the Holy Ghost said, when they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, how did the Holy Ghost speak? Through the teachers, which were confirmed by the prophet. A prophet only confirms what a teacher says. So it is through the teachers that people are appointed. So when we come and sometimes we tell you the Spirit of God says this person, uh, you are, the, the Lord called you to be a pastor. The Lord called this one to be a prophet. This one, this one, this is his future. This and that. It is in the, it is in the office of a teacher with the wisdom of God in our hands. Let's close. Talk to the Lord now. Bless his name. Zangri to go vogos kusifra. Zangri to go vogos kusifra. Megle te give vegas kise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, one other thing again about a teacher is that a teacher is also the one in charge of judgment. He's the one who passed judgment. He's the one who is in charge of judgment. A pastor does not do judgment. But what do you have today in many churches? Is it the pastor that passes the verdict? Somebody, the pastor is the one who decides who, who should be suspended, who should be appointed, who should, and the punishment to give a member, a faulty member, a faulty leader. It is not the pastor that does it. It is the teacher that does it. But in a situation where there is no recognition for the office of a teacher, it, the, the pastor does everything. When you read Ezra chapter 9, you see how Ezra passed judgment as a teacher. And when you go to John chapter 5, when you go to John chapter 5, when you go to John chapter 5, and you read verses 22, when you read John chapter 5 verses 22, you get to see that the Bible says, For God himself had committed all judgment to the Son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus himself, even though he said he's a good shepherd, he functioned as a teacher. So, don't forget, remember, even when you go to school, who gives you the exams? Who gives you the exam? Please answer. Who says the exam? The teacher. The teacher. The teacher. Who scores you? The teacher. The teacher. The teacher. 
So why is it that it's the pastor that is always telling and passing judgment? Because you see, too much ignorance, they do not know. Praise God. Praise God. So now we know. Now we know. There are many. See, there is no congregation. Say it. Say no congregation. No con Say it again. Say no congregation. No congregation is without a teacher. It is whether or not you can recognize them. No congregation is without a teacher. It is whether or not you can recognize them. That's all. It is whether or not you can recognize them. No congregation is without a teacher. God sends a teacher. You see this fivefold ministry gifts. The apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor and the teachers. They are in every congregation. It is whether or not you recognize them. Because God has sent them as gifts to every assembly, to every fellowship. It is whether or not you recognize them. That's all. Praise God. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. If you have learned something today, then talk to the Lord. Bless His name. If you have learned something today, bless the name of the Lord. Thank the Holy Spirit. Zagri Togo Vogos Kisa. Yego Togo Vogos Kosa. Pray for the Vogos Kosa. Make me take this Kisa. Make me take this Kisa. Marakas Kosa. Pray for this Kisa. Make me take this Kisa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' Kosa. Pray for this Kisa. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the vessel you used today. Thank you for Father. In Jesus' name. Continue keeping him. Say it. Continue. Amen. Taking care of him, Lord. Continue picking up him from glory to glory. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you because Lord. In Jesus' name. I was able to hear the word. Amen. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Three times. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Again, let's say three times. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. So if you, if you, if you, a prophet should fraternize with a teacher and make the teacher his best friend for effective work in ministry. That's how it is done. Amen. That's the Bible pattern. We saw that the prophets and 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 the teachers. But the apostles do not stay with prophets and teachers. They don't stay with them. They are always sent out. They don't stay with prophets and teachers. But teachers and prophets always stay together. But apostles, you won't find apostles in their midst. Because the apostle is always in the mission field doing the work. Except when there's a need. Um, or except when they come together and, and just have a forum. But you see these things, you see God is taking us back again to the original order in the early church. Because God wants, God is going to do, God, of course, He has started doing mighty things in our midst, even in this fellowship. Because, you see, we are going back again to how it used to be, so that we can achieve the same results that they achieved. Think about it. Is it not the same Jesus Christ? The Bible says the same. Jesus Christ is, Christ, Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday and today and forever. If it, if it was the same in the early church, He's still the same today. So how come we are not producing the results that they produced in the early church? Because we are not doing what they did. So now, we're, now we are learning so that we can start producing the same results that they produced. Don't you think so? So, so what are we going to do? We are going to do it the Bible way. Amen. 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 That's why this fellowship is not a church. It's, it's not a church. It's, it's a Bible class where we learn the word of God. See, because you see, they have, they, have, they have used church doctrines, church conventions to kick out the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost is outside the walls of the church now. He's organizing groups like this to teach. 
Amen. So that he can use us as his dynamite in this end time. Amen. Amen. And paralyze the activities of Satan. Amen. Praise God. All right. Brothers and sisters, we're sorry for, for offending your beliefs. If, if we did not concur with your definition that you gave of a teacher, please, we're sorry. But we just told you plain truths. And that was what, that was what, that is what does say the Lord that we just gave you. And that is God's definition of a teacher. That's how God sees a teacher. That's who God has called a teacher to be. Amen. And uh, we're sorry for taking most of your time. But let's take questions if you have any. Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. For glory and grace, this is Sister Keisha. I have a question. Um, among these fivefold ministries that uh, Christ gave us as a gift, who um, are they all? Can they all give Holy Communion in the churches? And for example, when we go to visit the sick and the housebound, are they all allowed to um, consecrate the bread and the wine, or are they just? can some distribute and the pastor consecrate thank so, you well the answer is that you don't even have to be any of the fivefold you don't you don't have to be in any of the fivefold office to take communion any christian any born again christian can take communion jesus said do this in remembrance of me he didn't say you must be ordained first all right he didn't say you must be ordained first. He said, do this in remembrance of me. He says, for as often, go to 1 Corinthians chapter. Let's even read Matthew chapter 26. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Matthew 26 verses 26. Matthew 26 verses 26. What did he say? Praise God. He says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Are you there? Matthew chapter 26, verses 26. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He says, And as. Sister Kisha, please read for us. Verse 26 to 28. Okay. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. I'm reading from the old KJV, old King James Version. All right, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. All right, now go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Let's see whether it is only ordained ministers that can serve communion. Yes, don't worry. Let, let's see. Let's let's see it now. Let's see it. Let's let's see it. Verses forty-eight to fifty-one. Okay. Forty-eight to fifty-one. We know what you mean. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. John chapter six, verses forty-eight to fifty-one. John chapter 6 verses 48 to 51, I'm reading again from King James Version. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is a bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I'll give for the life of the world. Did you see that? Verses 51. Look, notice what he said. He said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man, any. Did you see that? Any man. So you don't have to be anyone to take communion. He said, if any man, any man. All right. Now read verses 58. All right. John chapter 6, verses 58. Yes. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth eat it of this bread shall live forever. Did you see that? He said, he. He said he. What is he? Anyone. 
right? Anyone. Is, is that correct, Sister Kisha? Uh, yes. All right. But anyone but who is born again, though, right? Anyone who is born again. Okay. Go to First Corinthians, chapter ten. First Corinthians chapter ten. All right. Read from verses fifteen to eighteen. All right. First Corinthians chapter ten, verses fifteen to eighteen. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which you break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? We be many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Israel, behold Israel after the flesh, and not they which eat bread, which eat of the sacrifice, they partake of the altar. Now notice something he said in verse 7. He said, We being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Did you see that? So you don't have to be ordained to be a minister to serve communion or... You don't have to, to, to be in a leadership position. No, 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 no. Now look at verses. Look at chapter eleven now. Look at chapter eleven. Read verses twenty-three to twenty-six. All right. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses what? Twenty-six. Twenty-three to twenty-six. Okay. First Corinthians chapter ten verses. No, First Corinthians chapter eleven. Chapter eleven. Oh, oh I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter eleven verses. Twenty-three to twenty-six. Okay, I'm sorry, brother. I'll see. First Corinthians chapter eleven verses twenty-three to twenty-six. For I have received of the Lord that which are also which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is to, this do in a remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had soaked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you... As oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Verse 26, verse 26 now. For as oft, sorry? Verse 26, read verse 26. Okay, verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Did you see that? He said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, often, ye. He didn't say you must be ordained. Ye, ye is anyone, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's all. So have we answered your question, ma? Yes, sir. Thank you so, thank you, so much. Thank you so much. All right, ma. Thank all you, Holy Spirit. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks to the Holy Spirit. All right. Any other question, please? Any question, please? Praise the Lord. All right. Evangelist Monica, ma. Uh. All right. Tell us in two minutes. What have you learned today? At least we we are we have just we, we just concluded on this series on the gifts of the sun. So what have you learned today, ending the lesson? Uh, I learned today that uh, the teach, the office of a teacher is neglected in the in the in the uh, in the churches today, and that is the reason why. Uh, 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 miracle, um, I mean, signs and wonders and uh, mighty works are not done in the churches because the teacher is supposed to be the person that will be recognized in the church. Oh, oh. He is the person that teaches with the wisdom, uh, will recognize more than a pastor. Oh, and but Monica, can, can we ask you a question? Do you believe that? Do you believe that the ministry of the teacher is neglected? That is why there are no mighty works. Do you believe it? Yes, the ministry of a teacher is neglected because uh, a teacher works together hand in hand with the prophet in the church. But today, we, we know about only pastors, pastors. And it's only for the school teacher we know. And uh, anyone appointed as a Sunday school teacher. Before you go to the churches today, you, you to see a, a teacher. 
as it is we studied it today or as it is in the new testament it is very difficult people don't recognize a teacher in the in the in the in the, in the churches they only recognize pastor hmm. and the and the, so the school teacher is neglected so some people don't go to Sunday school when uh, when the when the time of Sunday school they will stay in the house until it is over well and Mother Monica don't you think that the reason why they don't they don't recognize the office of a teacher as per se is because they do not know what the Lord revealed to us today. Exactly, that is what I'm talking about. Because they, if they, if we if all of us know, if we know that the office of a teacher is as we is, is, is taught today, uh, nobody will, nobody will absent himself or herself in the in the Sunday school because it is from that Sunday school teaching the wisdom from God, the God the God has given to a teacher. And the, 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 the instruction and the explanation of the word of God, like extra. So uh, 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 that that even that is we are the blessings of the church. Every Sunday started from the Sunday school through the teacher teaching in the Sunday school. But Evangelist Monica, do you think a Sunday school? That, do you think that a teacher must be a a Sunday school teacher, one who is called to be a teacher? Must no, he be teaching Sunday no, school? No, no, I don't think. But what about what, what I'm talking about is because they. In the churches today, they take a teacher as a Sunday school teacher. Yes. That is how they know it only. Yes, but yes. It's, it's not supposed to be a Sunday school teacher only. Mm. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Yes, it's supposed mm -hmm. not to be a Sunday school teacher only. And again, the, so the, the teacher, the teacher, according to his uh, his office, um, works together with the prophet. Yes. And the, where, where the teacher is, and there is prophet with the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God and the expression of God, you know, things, uh, uh, churches will improve. Yes. They will know more about 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 God. But it is not practiced so in the churches today. Really, you can you can see churches practicing it this way. We only know pastor, pastor, pastor. We don't need our pastor and the other uh, five or uh, threefold ministries. We don't recognize uh, teacher. That's what I'm talking. Oh, so, Evangelist Monica, what do you think we can do now with this knowledge that you have received? What What are you going to do now? Would you give honor to a teacher when you meet one? Or will you be able to recognize a teacher now with what the Lord has taught us? Can you recognize a teacher when you meet one? Well, yes, yes, I can recognize a teacher with what the Lord has taught us today. The Holy Spirit has taught us today. I can recognize a teacher and uh, whenever... Whenever a teacher, wherever a teacher is, I even I be like I like to go closer to the teacher because with wisdom of God, when he's teaching, I will learn and understand more. I mm. will learn and understand more the word of God because he teaches with wisdom from God. Yes. So, but but but, he, but now, what now happens when if it, if he's teaching from the wisdom of God and it is not consistent with what you learnt in your theology, would that not be a problem? Don't you think that would be a problem to a teacher? That uh, what, uh, if, if that teacher is really teaching uh, according to the, uh, from the wisdom of God, the word of God, the word of God, teaching the word of God, and if that teacher is really, really having the right office as a teacher, not uh, a teacher that a pastor has been appointed to come and teach in the Bible classes on the school. Because in the, in the churches sometimes you see a person who is not supposed to come to teach. And that person is not a teacher, but the, because of appointment of a pastor, he's appointed or she's appointed as a teacher in the church. And when he comes, he, he, teaches, uh, he teaches according to the book given to, to him or her. So, according to the Sunday school manual. Okay, but uh, Evangelist Monica, what do you now say of correction in the church? Do you think the pastor should still handle it or a teacher should handle it as we have seen it in scripture? What do you say about correction in the church and appointment of leaders in the church or in a fellowship based on what the Lord has taught us today? Do you agree with what the Lord says or you think that uh, the pastor should still be in charge of that? To the uh, what I, I learned today, and according to the, the the teaching of the Holy Spirit, a teacher who is really a teacher should give, should be given the office of a teacher. If should be given the office of a teacher, and the, uh, when when the, when he is teaching, when he is teaching, uh, others should be very very much. Uh, closer to him and be attentive to him because he's teaching from the wisdom of God. That a, 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 a teacher 
that is appointed through the Holy Spirit of God or through as we have taught today. So when I see a teacher now, I will know that this is a teacher. Well, but what if he, what if he bears the title of an evangelist? Huh? What if he bears the title of an evangelist? You meet someone that your spirit tells you is a teacher based on what you now know, but yet he carries the title of an evangelist. What will you now say and say, and he tells you, call me evangelist, so, so, so? With, <laughs> with humility. With humility, if, if I can approach the person, if I can approach the person uh, after the observation, I will ask the person to pray and uh, ask God. Pray, pray whether this your calling as an evangelist is your real calling. Seek the face of God and see whether there be revelation ah, concerning this your, uh, your name, an evangelist. But evangelist Monica, would that not be insulting? As I see you. Would that not be an insult to him if you say that to him? Will he not feel insulted? I say with him. I say with humility. Yeah. Humility. If he, if he, if he doesn't want to take it, I just I leave the person alone. It will. Praise God. Thank you, Evangelist Monica. But Evangelist Monica, tell us what was it that got to you the most? What was it that that got to you the most concerning the office of a teacher? What concerns? What got me the most is that uh, a, a teacher, a teacher is a. Uh, 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 is careful in his uh, his, uh, his uh, ministry, and he also teaches. God gave him the wisdom. He has the wisdom, wisdom from God, mm. wisdom to uh, uh, for uh, to interpret, understanding the word of God, and interpreting the word of God. And again, uh, he also stays with the prophet because we are a teacher and a prophet are uh, two of them together working together. Uh, in fact. The, 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 the word of God will be superb because we are a, a prophet a, pro, a prophet can direct a teacher in some in some in some in some ways mm. and the, a teacher is the person who passes judgment he passes judgment he gives judgment through the wisdom of God he judge, he, go, he, he he has the right to judge to judge who, whoever is a, a, a has an offense or whoever whoever that is in the church that it needs to be corrected or needs to be uh, said you did this uh, because of this. he has the right to pass judgment a teacher all right thank you ma thank you so, so much we give everything to the pastor even the pastor uh, thinks that he is uh, greater than the teacher. I know all of them are, are working, doing the work of God. All, all of them are great. But in, in this teaching today, I know that a teacher, a, a pastor is supposed not to pass instruction to the teacher as his, as his superior. All right. Uh, all right. Let's ask Pastor Buki. Pastor Buki, what's your take on the lesson today? Uh, let's hear from you, ma. Pastor Buki. Let's hear from I, what I really learned about it is that a teacher is somebody who is already knows the word of God, but they make it. Um, oh my God, my head! But they um, go the extra mile, as in Ezra, that was a Levite, and still, you know, it was it was more of a choice. And what's just been going through my mind is. Even though it's the gift that the son gives, sorry, my head hurts. Even though it is the gift that the son gives, Ezra made himself a scribe, and that's one thing that really hit me hard. That you know what? It's a gift that God gives, and what I'm looking through it is, if you don't have that gift, it's something if you desire. I know God can give you. Because Ezra, by calling, was a Levite. Yeah. He made himself a scribe because he decided to study more on the Word of God. That was one part that really got me. And then the other part is a lot of people, like Evangelist Monica was saying, that they've, re they've just put the... Um, the the whole teaching is all, what they emphasize more is all about the Sunday school teacher. And somebody is often a Sunday school teacher because the pastor says, you, you're going to be a Sunday school teacher. That may not be their calling. And then they start teaching from the manual, and that just in itself, you know, it kind of turns a lot of people off. 
Because if the person doesn't even know how to explain or people are not getting from me, I believe that's why a lot of people avoid Sunday school. Does it mean that every Sunday school teacher is a teacher? No, there are some teachers that may be some Sunday school teacher that may actually have a calling of a teacher. But because sometimes the pastor is the be it all, they appoint these people to be a teacher and, you know, forgetting the fact that it's a calling. And there might be people in the church that actually are teachers, but because they see that, like you said initially, because they see that it seems the pastor is the one who's always elevated and they want to be that way too. They would rather be a pastor than be a teacher. So a lot of it has to do with what we have turned the office of the teacher to be. And that's not what God has made it to be. So there is a lot of correction that needs to take place. How are we going to do it? Only God can help us. Mm. And in terms of the correction in the body of Christ and the appointment, you know, from the explanation that is the prophets and the teachers that appointed the apostles. And I strongly believe that, you know, there is more to the office of a teacher mm. than the church gives to them today. Yes. So, but, uh, but Pastor Buki, if you were to make a personal choice among all the fivefold ministry gift, which would you desire the most? Me? Yes. Hey, Father in heaven. I say a teacher. Why? Why would you desire a teacher? Because you know now better. You know better. Because I know better and for some reasons, just the way looking at the life of Ezra. Yes, ma'am. I just, I see myself in there a lot more. Yes, ma'am. And I've been waiting for the teaching on teacher. I mean, I miss some part of it because of my son, but the, the part that I got, I've been waiting for this actual office to see that okay god do i fit in here i mean i've seen myself in some of the other offices but now knowing what i know i just have to you know avail and apply myself a lot more i see myself more as a teacher okay so Pastor Buki, so in a sense now um when you meet a teacher would you be able to recognize one even without him introducing himself or herself to you i believe so I believe so by the grace of God. Okay, so the help of the Holy Spirit. So at least for now, you cannot say she's a teacher, right? Praise God. Uh, I don't see she's a teacher. <laughs> Praise God. All right, let's hear from somebody else. Um, what, thank, you. thank you, Pastor Buki. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you. All right. So who would like to make a comment? Let's hear you, and then dismiss. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please tell us your name, ma. Yes, ma'am. from the Pokemon. All right, ma. Good afternoon, ma. Long time. Good to hear your voice. Amen. Yes, ma. Um, I'm excited with the teaching, um, you know, for what we have learned more. And um, I, I'm really touched by Ezra, uh, we, uh, what we read in Ezra chapter 7. Yes, ma. Well, we were telling us about, um, you know, this Ezra went up to from Babylon and he was ready. Uh, I'm reading from King James. He said he was a ready scribe. Mm. That, that, you know, that readiness, you know, to me it's like um, he was prepared, even though he's a calling, even though he's um, the office, you know, you have to have the calling. Or, but he, like, you, you just thought us, he, 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 he really thought and, you know, got himself prepared. Yes, ma. Even yes. ahead of time. That's yes, what I'm reading. The yes. ready scribe. Yes, even though he's a teacher, he, 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 he was truly equipped, even before the time. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. True. And one of the things that some of us even... Uh, to, to tell you, yesterday in church, the, uh, the, the Sunday school teacher we have yesterday, the Spirit of God made me understand that she was a teacher. So even now that you are talking about teaching us today, my spirit just went back yesterday. You could see, sometimes we have teachers who pass us say teach, but some of them are true teachers. Not everybody is a true teacher. Yes, ma. Because you could see the way to deliver is different. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. So, and now, uh, another thing that touches me is about the the prophet and the and the teacher working together. What I'm receiving, what I'm believing now is, um, the teacher prepares the ground for the for the for the prophet. Yes. Yes, ma. True. True. You know, so, and um, like you were asking us, what do you think we should do now? I think we, uh, uh, for some time we've been praying, uh, you know, let the five, four minutes to be found in our midst. Yes. Just like in this 
Bible study class. I truly really thank God yes. that the fire, uh, fire Congress Fellowship. Do I see the whole office? We have the whole yes, the gift of those five siblings. And we pray that we, yes. we still see the same thing in the church. And that, that yes, office of a, a teacher will yes, be, we be recognized more. Because yes, like we just Amen. said, they do mighty works. We don't even Amen. know that. Yes. Yes. They do mighty works like we read in the Bible. So it's not a really joke. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, nobody has recognized them. What we know, like pastor, prophet, this, that, that is a, a very, very peculiar office. Yes, ma'am. Very, very outstanding office. True. And also, sir, I believe that most people were called to be teacher, but they shy away from it. Exactly. You know, because everybody wanted to be a pastor. At least if they call you pastor, Ungozi, you know her. Uh -uh, come on. Nah, that would be good now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Go ahead, ma. You want to shine up to the like that was the one that before. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Amen. You know I love you, right? Amen, Pastor Buki. I know now. You always, you, you know, you're... I didn't hear what you said, though. No, Pastor Buki, Pastor Buki, Pastor Buki said... Pastor Buki said, like, Ozi, Ozi, you wanted to be a pastor at all costs. Yes. We will need to make that God to make them food. So that do what they stand in the office, they don't have all the How are you? That's what I wanted to share, and I thank God for it, especially Amen. for the teaching of today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Uncle, let's even ask you a question. Among the fivefold offices now, which one will you desire the most? Me to be. Amen. No, but at least now, Paul says desire the best gift. So, which one would you desire? <laughs> okay, you will talk to us privately about it. Eh? <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. So, how many of you would desire? How many of you would like to desire the office of a teacher now? Praise God. Are you serious? Nobody wants to be a teacher. Oh. Oh, oh, all right. Since nobody wants to be a teacher, let's close then. Since nobody wants to be a teacher, uh, Brother, can I say something? Go, go ahead, ma. I know ordinarily in the in the secular world, I know through living as a child that I'm a teacher, but I run away from it. But I don't know about in the house of God. Yes. You know, so um. I felt that it's meant for other people, but I know by the special grace of God that I know that um, I have that grace, you know, uh, and I know that, you know, if I really truly desire it, the Lord will just grant it for me. Amen. And you know, Sister Angkosi, you just taught us a while ago as you were explaining your, you were making your comments. You were explaining, you were just giving us the wisdom. So, Sister Angkosi, we suppose that maybe it is, it's a gift you should desire. Anyway, no wahala. We thank the Holy Spirit for it. All right, brothers and sisters, um, this is how much we can take today. And um, this evening, we'll, we'll begin the lesson on the gifts of the Spirit and something to desire. Something, something, something marvelous to desire. Amen. 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 All right, so let's thank the Lord. And um, Sister Ongozi, you will pray for us and dismiss us. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My Bible says the word of his like is A and Amen. Amen. Thank God is the whole God. Yes. Father, for your revelation and knowledge, you God. Father, we thank you for what you have taught us today. Father, we thank you even for the spirit of listening, oh God. Father, we thank you because you are such a wonderful God. Yes. For the opportunity of coming to learn at your feet, oh God, to learn even from your own son that you prepared for a day like this. What a mighty God we serve, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you even for your children that came on the line to hear from you, oh God. Father, we bless your name. We say your, your name is highly exalted above every other thing, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the revelation of the, 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 this gift that you have given to your children, the gift of a teacher. Mighty God, what an awesome God you are. Father, you taught us by yourself, O oh God. We give you praise, we give you adoration. Father, we pray, O oh God,
God that is out there learn this, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that we continually think of these things because they are good. We continually meditate over the word that you have given us today. Father, we thank you for the fivefold ministry, oh God. Father, we praise you, Father, as we desire some of these gifts, oh God. Father, may it be granted to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God, my Father, oh God. Father, oh God. Father, may we, we, we pray that we make ourselves available to be used by you. Oh my God, because you want the knowledge to be hard to be, to, for children who are perishing out there, yeah, children who lack knowledge out there. Father, may we be the ones even to go out there, oh God. To, 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 to let them know about this knowledge of yours, about what you have taught us. May we be different even in our churches. May our church, may we be, may we be asset to every church, every ministry we have found ourselves. Because they are, the word of God is truth and their life. So that their word will be protected as their oh God. It's not by saying, oh, may we be doers of their word. Because the teacher also, be, also do your word, also prepare his or herself, even before the time of God. Father, we thank you. Because we will not just be here as oh God. Father, we will continue to be doers of your word. We thank you, mighty God, what you have done today. Glory and adoration be unto your name. We thank you, Lord, oh God. Father, may the beauty of God be continually still in us. May the word of God be, may we fully be rich and rich with your word. May we be those ones who will rightly divide the word of truth. And that is you, Lord. That's the word of God. Father, we bless your name. We say their name will be continually glorified. Wherever we are, oh God, we continually be the light, oh God. We continually be the salt of the earth. Father, that's the way we become the salt. That making other people know that the word of God is life. By inculcating what you have said to us. By enriching others with the truth, with the power of the most high God. With the word of life. Father, we thank you because you are the bread of life. Father, we continually be the branch, oh God. Because we know you are the true vine. My God, my Father, you are an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, thank you all for glory and grace. Have a productive afternoon. We love you all. We'll meet in the evening. Bye-bye.